Well, I'm headed out to check on a couple of jobs today, so I'm going to drop down here in the canyon and run south along the east side of the mighty Columbia River for about 10 miles down to a little place called Mattawa. If you Google that, I think it'll tell you that the surveyor set up stakes and declared it to be the middle of nowhere. And the wind don't blow down there. It sucks. That is the Vantage Bridge you're looking at. And that's about enough of this. Some trees we grafted two years ago turned out really nice. Really nice trees. He's done a good job tying them, training them. We're going to stop in today and see our friend Too Tall. Uh, he's the one that I uh, came down here in the Blue Diamond and picked up that uh, Eaton Fuller 10 speed that's going to go on my V12 project. He's got an old Ford pickup that he's uh, mocking up in here on some kind of chassis, as I understand it. Let's see if we can take a look. Now, we filmed outside when we loaded this transmission, and he was fine with that. But when I asked about filming that project, he seemed a little reluctant, and I always ask. And I don't ever want to make anyone uncomfortable, and I don't ever want to post anything on the Internet that someone doesn't want there. So, out of respect for him and for our friendship, I'm going to omit that uh, portion of the video. He'll show it to us when he's ready. Oh, cool old Chevy Stepside there. Real cool. Yeah. Hey, too tall? <laughs> it's old Studi. Hello there, ladies and worms, I mean germs. It is a beautiful, sunny 50 degrees at my elevation today. About 53 downtown, maybe a little more, I'm not sure. Oh, it's a beautiful day. I saw on Instagram, uh, Trish Peak posted a, a couple of photos of the snow in Georgia, where they are. So, uh... I guess I'm doing all right today. Hey, you know what? This weather just kind of gives me a, a rat rod itch. And I think, I think I'm going to scratch it. What do you think, Bernice? Let me done up and told you what we're going to do. First, we're going to open the door here because it's so nice. And uh, the heat's turned off. Well, I'll probably, probably be busting beads here before long. I'll be uh, breaking a sweat. Uh, I think, I think I'm gonna grab a battery and throw it in the old rockabilly and uh, see if that puppy will fire up. See if that old flivver will start up. I kinda bet he will. I don't know what a fliver is exactly. That's what my dad called his old beater rigs that he drove. Go out and start the old fliver. And I don't know if that's a specifically a, a you know a, a brand or a breed of uh, automobile, or, or uh, I don't know if it's an old Chevy or he kind of 
predominantly had Chevys. He had Fords too, sometimes, but uh, mostly Chevys is what what I helped him work on, what I learned on old 216s and 235s. But so I don't know what a flivver is. I need to I need to do some research on that. All right, let's get a battery and go out there and throw it in the rockabilly, the 32 Chevy Confederate, and uh, see if he'll start. I kind of think it will. I've had some people making inquiries as to my whereabouts of late. A couple of emails, where you been? Uh, you haven't been on Instagram, you haven't been, uh, been on YouTube, and what's going on, are you okay? And, well, you know, I tend to post a video about once a week. I posted one on February 1st. So, um, so I reckon I'm uh, pretty much on schedule. Today is the 8th. So uh, if I'm overdue, it's only by day. But uh, anyway, nice to be thought of and have people concerned if I don't show up, I guess. Okay. Get yourself down in there. Whoops. I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. Now get your yourself down in there. There we go. <laughs> um, I was looking for, looking for these straps for those batteries. I didn't even bring any wrenches. <laughs> Tied up cable so Breaking all this twisted on. It'll be okay. I don't think I don't think I got my little wrap rod toolkit in here. No. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see if there's any, any pusheline in this thing. That's the original tank for this truck. I, um, it was originally mounted under the seat. So in 1932, you went to the gas station, everybody had to pile out and you pulled the seat out and put gas in. But, you know, people were not in a big hurry, I guess, back in 1932. Let's say trying to make a getaway from a bank robbery or something. and They probably wouldn't be driving one of these if they were. Probably be driving that new V8 Ford. So, uh... Yeah, I did a pour 15 gas tank treatment on this thing, and man, it's just fantastic. It has this stuff you put in there and shake it all around, it etches it, and then another treatment you put in there and it coats it, turns it white, and it's uh, really, really worked out nicely. Oh yeah, we got, we got a little in there. Enough to fire the old boy up, I believe. That's where that's at. Get you guys off the tripod here. Eh, nah, maybe I'll just set you up outside here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Let me know if you see any sparks flying off of the barbed wires. Okay, Flipper, what you gonna do? Don't let me down now.
just love it. This whole thing needs some, uh, it needs some love. Uh, I've got to put a manifold gasket on there. Um, it's leaking pretty bad out the exhaust gaskets down in, down in here, in there where the exhaust manifold bolts up to the head. And, uh, it really needs a set of rings. <laughs> when I was a te teenager, we used to say the, the rings are so, so worn out that the pistons are swapping holes. Well, that makes absolutely no sense at all, but uh, it's kind of fun to say. Uh, I see some water dripping off of them. <laughs> I picked up a little snow. I'm carrying some snow <laughs> coming through that snowbank. Yeah, let's uh, let's put some air in the tires. Uh, give that oil time to run down and check its level, and. Uh, you know, maybe check out the lights and everything and see uh, see how the old boy fared the winter. Uh, not that winter's over, but uh, it's sure nice today. From what I can read and find out, these are the most inaccurate air pressure gauges that you can have. So, uh, of course, that's what I use. Uh, we're not even <laughs> not even showing on the gauge. Yes, sir. Sure do love this rat rod, man. It just kind of gets in your blood. This is the first rig I ever built. And I'll show you show you show you some things uh, things on it after we get to aired up and whatnot. Twenty some pounds in there. We'll throw about thirty pounds in there. I think that's what they say. Thirty. Yeah, 33, 33 PSI. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys off while I check the rest of these tires. This is what I always carry with me when I take my rat rod out. And uh, this is, it's all rusted away, worn off here. You can't see it anymore, but this, this should say uh, Handy Andy. It says Handy Andy's tool set. And, uh, you can't make it out anymore, but uh, there's a picture of Andy there. There's Andy right there. There's little Andy. There's Handy Andy by Blue Diamond. And when I was a little boy, this would have come with uh, all a little uh, plastic hammer and a, a toy screwdriver and maybe some wrenches and a few things like that. Um, so this is my little rat rod kit. And I carry uh, various things in here. Let you see there's a oh screwdriver nine sixteenths and half and probably a you know a, a five eighths and a seven sixteenths and there's a crescent wrench and some wire cutters and test light um, radiator clamps uh, little ones for these tiny hoses on this thing thermostat set of points some fuses battery cable clamps uh, some wire zip ties. But the most important thing, there's even, a, there's even a little gas line cutter in there. If I have to do something with the fuel line or something. If you have to cut a brake line and pinch it off or something, whatever. Uh, but the most important thing, the most essential thing in here, is this right here. When you go out with your old Chevy rat rod, you've got to have a low supply of bailing wire. That's just a, that's a, that's a must have. So yeah, I've got all kinds of stuff in there. It's just kind of kind of packed out with good stuff, man. Check out that dipstick. It's a big one, ain't it? Might be in frame there, yeah. What is that? Uh, from here to from here to here is about six inches. It's a whopper. Whole thing overall is about eight, ten inches long. All right, he's down, uh, yeah, he's down half quart. He uses quite a bit of oil. That's okay. He's old enough to smoke. So let me, uh, let me throw a little something in there. Some old straight 30 weight if I can find it. STP, motor honey, any old thing will go in there. 
and most of my old rigs I run uh, some uh, diesel oil that's got uh, zinc in it. The most parts per million zinc that you can get for these old rigs. And I run some lead substitute in the gas. I used to have some lead additive. I used to be able to buy that. You can't get that anymore. It's lead substitute now. And I don't know how much it helps or hurts, but uh, but I throw it in there. Okay. I'm going to put in exactly a half quart of this Rotilla diesel oil. There we go. Right there. Half quart. Exactly. Perfect. Close enough for government work, ain't it? Okay, there's that. What else? Let's check the coolant. Check the mic. Test one, two. Test one, two. Oh, we are good. We got plenty of antifroze in there. What do you think? You guys want to go for a ride? I'm kind of hankered to go for a little ride before it, gets, before it starts to cool off. Well, I'm going to throw a little bit more pushlene in this thing just because I happen to have some sitting here in the can a little bit. Uh, I'm not going very far, but you know, I've got a little here, so I'm going to put it in. You know how people send me stuff and give me stuff all the time, and this is a pretty cool piece right here. I think this thing's just kind of awesome. I love using this old stuff, man, when I can. What I don't like is this stupid OSHA stuff, man. Pain in the rear. That's how you get her done. That's how Whalen does it. Dump that in there and get on with it. Plus, I carry a curious per gallon in the back of this thing. I've got a milk crate in there with uh, a toaster out, an extra gallon of gas, and a couple of things like that. Jumper cables. You never know, these old rigs. Uh, it's not good to be like Victor said, be like a boy scout, or he says, be like a girl scout, be prepared. <laughs> Alright, that's cool. Let's fire this thing up and go for a little ride. Yeah. Ignition, water pump, electric fan, and the starter is this old monkey wrench right here.
Here we go.